So Blender, the multi-purpose software that it is, has a really handy feature, baking. So what is a bake? Well, we're not talking about making pastries in Blender here. Rather, a bake in Blender refers to converting something into a saved form. What I mean by this is, for example, if you bake a cloth simulation, Blender calculates the position of the cloth at each frame and then saves the calculation as what we call cache. This means that when we play the animation, the simulation is already calculated and Blender doesn't have to waste resources calculating the simulation every time you play it. In terms of baking, we're talking about taking material or normal data and converting it into an image. For example, I could bake the base colour of this material and get an image that represents the material's base colour. Now, as we learned in the last episode, texture is an image of what you want a respective shader parameter to display and can be used in many types of software such as game engines and Blender of course. Whereas a Blender material is something you make in Blender and can only use reliably within Blender. Usually we make a material in Blender and then bake it so we can use it in another software or within a new Blender file without the need to append a material. So think of textures as converting a material into images. Now that sounds great, but what about this cross shape that the material has baked onto? Well, this here is called a UV and the UV determines where the texture will be baked. This is important so the texture shows on the model how we would like it to. UVs are also a great way to make sure our resolution is the same all around the model. In order to make the UV, we want to do a process called UV unwrapping, which we will cover at a later date. Fortunately for us, cubes come with a UV made for us in Blender, so we can jump straight into baking. But first we need to see the UV. To see our UV layout in Blender, all I'm going to do is come to the top left hand corner and drag this out. Then I'll click on the top left hand corner drop down menu and change it from 3D viewport to UV editor. If you want to download this cube we made in the last episode, you can download the Blender file in the description below. Now I'm going to press tab to enter edit mode and if I press A to select everything, you can see this cross shape I was talking about earlier. If I turn on this, these two arrows, it'll mean when I select something in one of these modes, it will select it in the other. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to select one of these faces. And now you can see when I've selected this middle face here, it's selected it on the cube as well. So this tells us which face belongs to which UV. As I mentioned earlier, because Blender has given us this automatically, it means we don't have to do any UV unwrapping, which is handy. So let's go about baking this texture we made in the last episode. First thing I'm going to First thing I'm going to do is I can pick one of my materials. I'm going to do my spotty wallpaper first. Then I'm just going to press shift and then A in the shader editor. Come under texture and I'm going to left click image texture. Then if I click this plus new I can create a brand new image. Usually we work in 4k but for this video I'm just going to work in 1k in order for time efficiency. I'm going to change it from untitled to base color. As you can see I've spelt color as C O. L O U R. This is because I am located in the United Kingdom. If you are located in another English speaking country, it may be spelled as C O L O R. Now I'll press OK and you can see we've got a bunch of drop downs here. I'm going to keep all these the same and we'll have the colour space as sRGB. Sometimes we want to set this to non colour for other types of what we call maps. Now we've done that, I'm going to click on our render properties on the top of our properties menu. And under render engine, if you're on EV, make sure you switch to cycles. This is because EV can't actually bake textures, only cycles is capable of doing that. Down here, you can see we've got samples. Since this is a bake, we can actually turn this down really low and it will hardly affect the look of the texture. However, it will render much faster. So I'm going to change my max samples on the render to 10. You don't need to change the max samples on the viewport, but for peace of mind, you can easily do that. Then you'll see there's a tab here called Bake. 
This is where we do all of our texture bakes. We're going to open this up and you can see there's a drop down here where we can select what type of bake we want to do. We have all sorts of different types of bakes, but for now, we're going to click Diffuse. This is essentially going to bake our base colour. Diffuse is another term usually used to refer to a base colour texture. Now under Contributions, I'm going to turn off Direct and Indirect. What these are, are essentially the light that you may have inside your render view. So since we're just wanting to bake the colour in our material, we're only going to want to have colour enabled. Have a quick look and make sure these settings are the same, although they should be by default. Then all I'm going to do to bake is simply press Bake. I recommend saving before you do this. Awesome, that's our bake complete. And as you can see, it's baked our spotty texture onto this image. If I press tab to go into edit mode, I can press A and you can see our cross here. And if I want to see our image underneath, I can just left click this drop down here, which looks like an image with a triangle on it. And I'm gonna click our base color image. Now you can see what the bake has done. It's perfectly normal to find that it will bake a little bit over the edges. Don't worry, that's not going to negatively impact the texture. That's just something Blender seems to do. If you know why this is, I'd appreciate it if you let me know in the comments below. That's great, but we're missing a square here. We're missing the square here because this is on another material. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna press tab to go back into object mode. Then I'm gonna left click on my material properties. And if I come up, I'm going to left click on our material one, which is the material we assigned to this square here. Fortunately, we can bake both these materials onto the one texture. So I'll press shift and then A, then under texture, I'm going to left click image texture. I'm going to left click on this image drop down and select base color. Now I'm going to come back up to my render properties and we're ready to bake again. Keep all the settings the same and then just left click bake. Awesome. So it's finished baking and now you can see the texture is complete. One important thing we need to do is save our texture since this texture isn't necessarily built into Blender. So if you see up here, there's an image with a star sign. This star sign on any type of software essentially means that it's not been saved. So for example, if I saw a star beside the Blender, it means that something has changed since it was last saved. So now I'm going to left click on this image drop down and I'm going to press save as and then cho you can choose a directory to save your image. Now I'm going to create another cube to demonstrate the fruits of our labor. So I'll press shift and then A to bring up the add menu in the 3D viewport and under mesh I'll left click cube. Then I'll press G and Y to move it along and I'm going to create a brand new material for it. So I can come under either my material properties or my shader editor and just left click plus new. Then I can press shift and then A, texture, then left click image texture. Then I'm just going to left click or drop down and left click our base color. Then I'm going to connect the two color sockets like this and now you can see our texture is now appearing on here. You will see it is a tiny bit more blurry and that's because we baked it on a 1K texture, whereas usually the standard would be 4K. So do keep that in mind if you're baking textures at lower res. Our roughness setting is already at what we want it to be, and now we essentially have the exact same cube. However, our new one only needs one material and an image, whereas another one requires two separate materials and quite a few extra nodes. So as you might imagine, this one is a lot quicker to create. So what if I want to add an image texture from a file outside of Blender. Well, all I'm going to do is left click this X here, then I'm going to press open and a menu will open where you can find your image. If you want to try another example, I've left this gingerbread texture in the description below which you can download and you can try importing it into Blender if you want to practice. Otherwise, you can just watch. I'm going to left click open and then find my texture in the file browser. Now I've added my nice gingerbread texture which I made a little while ago. I'm going to turn the roughness up on this one since gingerbread is a lot rougher. But what about textures like these? What if I'm just repeating the same image on every square of the cube? Well to do that we're going to use a different type of UV called a cube projection. So I'm going to press A to select everything and just press H to hide. Then I'm going to press Shift and then A. I'm going to add a brand new cube. So I'm going to press plus new to add a new material. Now you can either drag and drop your image into Blender or we can do the same thing where we press shift A, go down to texture, left click image texture, left click open and then just find your image. I have called this image woodbasecolor.png. So just left click that and you can press open image when you find it. Then I'm going to connect the color to the base color. And then go into, go into edit mode and select everything. Then I'll left click this image drop down 
in the UV editor and I'm going to select wood base color. So this is the texture we are using. Now I want to make every single square the size of the texture. This will both maximize the usage of the resolution and it will make sure our cube is scaled and rotated for each single UV square. So to do that, I'm going to press A to select everything in the 3D viewport and edit mode. And then I'm just going to press U and this will bring up our UV mapping menu. Then I'm going to left click this option called Cube Projection. Now you can see it's turned into one big square, but these are actually all six of these squares stacked on top of each other. You'll also notice that some of them are rotated as well. So now we have the texture evenly distributed throughout the cube. To make sure this is working properly, we're going to use a texture coordinate. So I'm going to press Shift A in our shader editor, then I'm going to search for texture coordinate. I'll left click on that, and I'm going to drag the UV into the vector of this image texture. We'll cover what vectors are in episode 4 of this course. That's great, but what if I think my wood is a little bit too small? Well, we can easily fix this. Press tab to enter edit mode, press A. Then if I press S, I can scale it down. So we're gonna to want to work in fractions here. And I'm gonna press S and then type in 0.5. Then I'm gonna press tab to go back into object mode. And we can have a look at our cube. Now you can see the wood effect is much smaller. But what if I wanted to make it bigger? Well, we can do this as well. So I'll go into edit mode, select everything, then press S and then two, and that'll scale it back up to its original size. But if I was to scale this up over the boundaries, this does work inside a blender. Just keep in mind that you won't be able to do any texture painting or baking, and you may have some errors in other software. So I recommend always keeping the UV within the bounds of our image. So some of you might be wondering, then why was the image in the thumbnail not a single image? It's identical on each face, right? Well, actually, each one of these faces are unique, which is why I stuck with the basic cube unwrap that Blender has by default for the cube. And I also want to create a cool thumbnail. So some of you might be wondering, well, can we use an image to represent other parameters, such as maybe roughness, metal, or specular? Well, yes, we can. However, we're gonna cover this in a later tutorial in the series, since it's a little bit more advanced. For now, we're gonna wrap up the tutorial here and have a quick quiz. Number one, what is a texture bake? Number two, what is a UV map? Number three, what is the difference between a texture and a material? You can pause the video to answer the questions and I will go over the answers in 15 seconds from now. Number one, what is a texture bake? A texture bake is an image that represents one of the parameters of our material. Today, we covered how to bake a base color texture, but there are other types of texture bakes as well, which we will cover later. Number two, what is a UV map? A UV map is a 2D representation of our 3D object. It acts almost like a paper craft before it's turned into a 3D form. So you can think of a UV map as a flattened out version of our 3D object. This is really important for texture baking, so we can get an accurate texture to use in other software or other Blender files. Number three, what is the difference between a texture and a material? Well, a texture is an image used to represent a certain parameter of a shader. They can be used in materials inside of Blender and in other software. A material, on the other hand, is something made in Blender, represented using nodes in the shader editor. Materials are mainly just reliable within the engine they were created in. So for example, a Blender material would only be reliably consistent inside of Blender. However, we can use a material to bake textures, which we can then use in other software. Awesome. Well done everyone on completing the second episode. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And you can also comment your answers to the quiz in the comments below and I'll mark them for you and I'll answer all your questions to the best of my ability. In the next episode, we're going to cover the types of built-in textures inside a Blender. For now though, take care and I'll see you next time.